Welcome back. This is Still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And yes, that was full czar before we even mm. move into the next story. So I think it's clear now that Uganda did the right thing. You know, they were only following the law and they were doing what they were supposed to do. So it's mm. not right. You know, mm. Well, I mean, it's she just did, the truth. No, she did keep mentioning political unrest. So I think that has a lot to do with it. No, I mean, it doesn't. Aside from the political unrest, she's also saying that, look, certain countries have laws and then when you go there you need to make sure that before you go for a concert you need to make sure that you're meeting with the laws of this country mm. so it's not a thing of it's the organizer now we all owe that duty of, of diligence and I mean, you know i mean before even before foza came we've always said everybody had a responsibility i just i personally i just didn't think the treatment that they got was necessary and for but that's me, how they would have treated their own I don't it's not think because so. yeah, I that's don't, how they would I don't have think so well that's why i, I kind of like that she kept mentioning political unrest because if they if the country is already tense it's very different it's like it's like it's like um trying to say that nigeria is the way it is when we were functioning with NSAs. like the government was moving very different the people were moving very different it's just a very different time so i, I wouldn't say that if this happened two years ago when things were normal there was no covid there wasn't any oh, political oh, arrest if there was no things covid do you think they would have arrested temp now i'm surprised you're talking about the political unrest because if you're talking about two years ago there was no covid 19. so of course they would have gone to perform in uganda well, they don't what i'm care. saying is that the, co the political unrest that foza mentioned cannot be ignored that obviously had a part to play that's what she said except she wants to say what she was saying didn't make it said the country was under political unrest yeah. already yes exactly. but it didn't have a part to play in whether or not they were breaking the rule mm -mm. they I'm were talking about breaking... the treatment of their breaking the rule is what i'm talking about okay okay what treatment exactly can you putting say? them in handcuffs that's how they would have treated their own i don't think the personally speaking i don't think so but moving on from that i also like that she mentioned um artists getting tories visas to perform i've never really thought about it like that and i don't know for sure actually what um visas the artist got so because i always used to mention like if i'm going to say that i'm going to perform at a country mm. political arrest COVID-19, you grant me that visa. It's it's a it's not it's not sitting well with me. That doesn't make any sense. But mm. now that she said it, I don't even know what kind of visa. Like mm. for all you know, they didn't actually state outrightly that I'm coming to perform. Maybe they went as tourist people or whatever. Like there's a lot that could have happened, especially depending on the um, show promoters that she also mentioned who can be dodgy as well. So I'm sure there's more to the story that we're not aware of, but I'm yeah. glad it's over. And, that and I think Omale also mentioned that is there more to this than I know that mm. because it was being set up in Uganda. But we're glad um, Omale and um, Thames, our baby girl, have been released. And then we hope they get back home soon. You know, we want to, you know, why they want to try me? I think they're Try home. me. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, no, I mean home, like. Home, home, right. home. Yeah. It wasn't like to tea time table. Okay, come on. Right. This is home. After. Yeah, we can't wait to get you guys home. So when you guys come, <laughs> you know, we'll probably get you, you know, your your very hot cup of coffee or tea, whatever you like. So just it's stay with time. us. One as OAP has exposed a street beggar who rented someone's baby to beg. She explained that after she saw the woman begging with her children, she took them to a rehab center to rehabilitate them, only to see the woman again on the street with another child that is allegedly not ours. However, when she confronted the beggar, asking her where she got another child from, the woman ran off with the baby. Uh, Aunt Landa, whose real name is Yolanda N. Judge David, is a Caucasian media personality resident in Nigeria. She has now pleaded with Nigerians to stop giving women with babies money as to discourage them from renting babies to beg with. But we have um, a friend who will share the first hand experience with us. You know, this one is coming from somebody else, but a first hand experience will be shared shortly. So see that video. So I would usually pass Lekki at this on my way to work and this particular day I had wound down because there was this woman I always used to see with two children and it was so obvious they were not her children. And so that day I just you know, sort of threatened her and said to her I was going to take her to the police and I think they were not her children. Once I said that she literally fled but the money she came to beg for was no longer you know, important and then she just fled and that was it. Hmm. All right, so that's the first-hand experience. So, uh, my bad, um, Aunt Yonder is actually black. 
black and not Caucasian. And um, yes, yeah, so um, we got a first hand experience from Irene Ubani, who is also a media personality. We shared her own story of how she saw a woman with kids and she wanted to help, and then the woman fled. You know, she even tried to know that she was going to call the cops and all that. So, um, what's your take on all of this? It's definitely a hustle, an illegal one at that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, I mean, it's simple math. People. They know that people are sympathetic. Most mm. people are, especially with children. Mm -hmm. Children are vulnerable and need to be taken care mm. of. So the urge to want to help somebody who is that vulnerable as a child is is just human nature. Mm. And obviously, they know they know that psychology and they know that math and they know that it works. So it's not that. Um, I mean, sometimes. Very few times is because they have to. A lot of the times it's just a mathematical formulation of this is my hustle. This is what I'm going to do. I need a child. The child must not be more than four. The child must look hungry. I must look like this and this and this and this and that. And then they go on the street and beg. Um, I remember when, when I was a lot younger, I used to be so sad that my mom wouldn't give someone on the road um, mm. money that if he begged or if the person begged or whatever. But as soon as I got older, especially knowing how much resources we have in place, especially in places like Lagos, for children, for mothers, for single parents, for widows, for like free school, um, mm -hmm. um, what's it called, um, feeding sh um, schemes that the government has put in place, you realize that a lot of these people are intentionally staying on the mm -hmm. road. It's not that they don't have an option or that they want to leave. Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I used to go a lot to Freedom Way, and I asked one of those ladies, because they used to run with me. And I like kids, so I actually play. And, and I don't like giving them money, so I'll buy food, which is what I do. So I don't want them to go give it back to their parents. I'll buy food and then we'll all eat. Sometimes mm. I'll eat with them and stuff. Um, and I remember asking one of the, um, the people that if they have gone and looked for another job or whatever, if they'll be interested in that. I said no. And then I asked her, that, how much are you getting paid on a rough, like, how much are you earning per Perfect. month? Um, and she said between 60 to 70 K, but it's not enough. I'm just like, whoa, wow. Okay, <laughs> so of course she's going to find another baby to put on the road. It's a mindset thing. Until the government gets involved, another thing I want to say is that I liked her ginger saying that 2020, 2021, we're going to face it um, hands on. Yeah. But I think you need to get the government involved. First of all, start making it really illegal to do that. Uh, secondly, putting resources for them to go to. So you can't make one problem. You can't solve one problem by creating another problem. Mm. If you take them off the streets, make sure that they, they are, they are places. And are they, they are places, actually. They are a lot of places. Until we start saying that the places are full, then we have another conversation. Mm. But if the government can get involved and start to put policies around that, then maybe we can start to save them. Because away from just begging, some people might say, oh, mind your business, is just begging. Let them just beg. It's actually mm. quite... Um, Toxic I've been getting for the people children. say that to her, like it's none mm. of your business. You don't need to get involved. Yeah, no, you have to get involved. These children's lives are at risk. They get molested on a daily. daily. They get robbed. They they use them for kidnapping and um, um, what's it called rit rituals, rituals now and stuff. So it really shouldn't it shouldn't be happening. All right. So my my take personally is nobody's saying do not be kind, do not be nice to people you see on the street. If you feel like giving, please by all means give. But um, be sure, especially when you see that kids are involved, it's actually very imperative for you to know that. Look, if I'm giving to this person, it's this child for this person because you never know. Some of these people just gather kids around them, you know use them and then they just let them and without any care you know some of them the, the adult is actually the one who gets the benefit mm -hmm. and these kids are still left with just one uh, one one meal a day mm -hmm. and they're not properly fed they're not properly clothed not and they're not properly uh, educated in fact education is not even their thing they just believe that okay this is a grind this is a family business some people are taking it up like this is a family yeah. business this is the line in which we're going to talk so be very careful when you give especially in this Christmas season because it's Christmas and like you know we're already in that vibe mode so sit back relax don't go nowhere